Hi everybody. Welcome back. If you are new to my channel, my name is April. This is Plan with April and you are knee deep into a planner series. This is for, I wouldn't even say it's for beginner planners, although it is. It's helping, hopefully, helping you choose the planner that's right for you. And it doesn't really matter um, if you are brand spanking new or if you are a veteran planner like I am. I watch these videos and I'm like, ooh, I might have to get that planner. And as you've seen, I've done that quite a few times, especially in 2020. When is this book? Yep, 2020 <laughs> again. This is the giant teacher planner from Erin Condren. It's a lesson planner. And you're thinking, oh, April, are you a teacher? Nope. Nowhere near am I a teacher. I am a lifelong learner. Oh, by the way, get yourself something to drink. I'm starting in on the Chardonnay. And grab a notebook, grab a pen, pencil, marker, whatever crayon you want to take notes with if you want to take notes. What I'm doing for this whole series is just showing you all the different types of planners I've accumulated over the years to help you kind of narrow down your planning style for today. Now, you may revisit this series in six months and say, I wanna try bullet journaling. I wanna try daily planning. I wanna try hourly planning. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. This series is gonna be here for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good crisp Chardonnay. Anyway, the series will be here for you. One thing to remember when you're looking at planner styles is write down the things that you love or that you really believe that you will utilize in a planner and then write down the things you don't think you're going to use because I have yet to find a planner that is 100% what I'm going to need for the rest of eternity, right? Because this may work today, but it may not work three weeks down the road. What if tomorrow... I find that I want to start another career. You know, this planner may not work for that, but a different type of planner would. Also, on another note, never throw away your planners. And I will tell you this because even if you only used a week in it, one, you'll want to go back and look at that week. And two, you can always reuse your old planners. Even if they're undated, you can cover the dates and make them into a new planner. Comment down below if you want to see an example of that and I will absolutely film one or a couple because I have done that so many times. Because I order planners, I think I'm going to love them. And then once I move into them, I'm like, oh, no, I don't really love it as much as I thought I would. Or I move into it and then I say, I love it, but not for today. In the corner here, I ordered a bunch, it looks like, of corner pockets from EC you they're sticky notes and you just place them in the pages and then you can hold things in the corner doesn't look like i used any of them but i've got them here just in case i am afraid this is such a big book i want to make sure it's in screen it's it's eight and a half by eleven it's ginormous eight, eight and a half by ten let me where did i put my ruler i've lost it i've lost it with my mind it's all gone it is, it is giant. Um, I ordered this because I wanted to have the layouts when I was doing my, my book writing, like I was trying to plan out a new book. So I'll kind of show you that process as I'm going through this. If you are a teacher, I'm sure this is going to be perfect for you just laid out the way it is. Um, you've got this information here. All of this is customizable. And when I say that, I mean, you can washi tape over whatever you don't want. You can white out whatever you don't need. You can put stickers over things to make it more customized for you. So let's hypothetically say 98% of this planner was made for you, but these two pages weren't. It's fine. You can just cover them with something or ignore them. Obviously, I ignored them completely. Communication log. This could be, obviously, for teachers. Um, what happened? When did it happen? But this could also be, I was going to use this when I was um, interviewing editors and different uh, book cover illustrators to keep track of this. I did find a different solution. I don't think I used this very much at all. Yeah, I tried it for work 
for one week and that was it. So this is pretty much a brand new planner, even though it's dated 2021. Again, I can show you how to fix that to you, change that. So ideas for communication log. This could be if you run an Etsy shop or you run your own business, you could use this page um, for notes that you need to take, problems that you've had, issues that you've had. You could definitely use those pages. You've got a future log so current year 2020 back in the day future log of 2021 in today's world it would be 2023 and 24 if you ordered this for 24 it would be 2024 and 2025 oh my gosh why does that seem like so jetsons in the future seriously you have your monthly boxes here again for you customizable you can put stickers over these and you can put 12 different goals you want to do 12 different books you want to read um if you're like me you can print things off from the internet <laughs> on sticker paper and you could put you know like if this was a book cover like this is a book cover you just make it large enough so that it covers those and there you have it or you take your favorite pen or your favorite pencil and you just write in here January books of the month or book of the month. Write the title and do a quick review. What did you love or not love about that book? Let's say you've got 12 goals for the year. Write those 12 goals in here. Let's say you want to use this to track birthdays. Track your birthdays. The sky is the limit. And since there's 12 boxes, even if you don't want to use the months, you could do 12 meals you want to try for the year. 12 meals, 12 recipes. There's just so many things you can do with these boxes. Don't don't get stuck in the day in the month that's on there. You can change that. Creating a seating chart is what this is for. So like for a teacher to create a seating chart for their room. You can create anything you want on here. Anything you want. It is grid space and nothing is coming to mind, so I'm just going to skip these pages cuz I can't be that creative. Oh no, there's two. <laughs> All right, we're skipping that one too. Then we've got lined pages. These are great for notes. You, you guys know, you guys know. And then dates to remember in September. So this is going to be what I would call our either vision board, future board, dashboard. This is where we're gonna put what we wanna happen in September. So in September, these are the dates that I wanna remember. Let's say I don't have any dates I want to remember in September. What if I don't have any birthday? What if I don't have nothing going on in September? What if I cross this out, I put a piece of paper over this, glue it in with my glue stick, and I write over here things I want to do in September, or September goals, or people I want to meet in September, books I want to read in September, you know, things that I want to do in this September as a month. Another thing with Erin Condren, I've talked about it a million times, her paper is freaking amazing. Like it is toothy and gritty and holds on to whatever you use to write in there with. Um, a few times I've had smudging, but not very often. I mean, it's, it's thirsty paper. I guess that's a good way to put it. It's toothy, it's got a grain to it, and it's thirsty. It's like when you paint a wall for the first time, you wanna make sure and do a minimum of two coats because it just like sucks it up. That's this paper. It sucks it up. Um, ooh, it looks like I wrote in here with a pencil, and that was probably years ago just to show you how amazing this paper is. That pencil has been in there, oh man, at least since 2020, obviously. So if you use a pencil, you're gonna have ghosting even after you erase it because the paper is so coarse. It's so, I compared it in my in one of my other reviews or in one of my other suggestions. Um, if you take a brown paper bag and a piece of parchment paper and you feel the difference of those, I would say the brown paper bag is closer to Erin Condren paper where the parchment paper is closer to plum paper paper. <laughs> plum paper paper. Mm -hmm. Probably want to go get that beverage if you haven't yet. Mm -hmm. So beautiful paper. It's toothy. It's gorgeous. If you're going to be using markers and stuff on it, I would definitely do a pen test because it is so absorbent that the color you think you're going to get may not be the color that you get. It's very 
I don't even know the word. It just sucks it in. Absorbent. I don't know. Thirsty is, a, is the best word I can think of for this paper. So you've got a giant monthly layout. It's beautiful. It's a Sunday start with a Saturday end. You guys all know me. If I was planning in this planner, that is the first thing I would do is I would change it to a Monday start with a Sunday end because my weekends are my end of the week. Sunday is the last day of the week for me and Monday starts off my week. So I like my planner to reflect that as well. Um, if you want me to do that and show you how I do that, let me know down in the comments below. And I will, I will definitely do that. I have today, tomorrow, and Sunday to film. So any kind of ideas you guys have, those are the three days that I have available that I can like throw some ideas up. And if you do ask for something specific, I will definitely tag you in it so that you don't miss it. So this is what the teacher planner looks like. This is what it's going to look like inside. So I know we have two different colors here. This is because this is August still, and then, then it starts September, and all of the months match their tabbies. So October's orange, November's that turquoise, chartreuse is sarch, sarch, um, hashtag wine. And then all of them are just different. So you'll have, if, your, if your month doesn't start on a Monday, you'll have a couple different colors at the beginning and end of the month. So just, just be warned that that does happen. So, Originally, because this is a teacher planner, my original thought was to white out these dates here, okay? And I was gonna put the dates up here because there are seven columns, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be this column, right? As the teacher planner, the way it is now, if you need a planner for your work week and your work week happens to be Monday through Friday, um, this is a really great planner for that. And the size of it is amazing. If you have a desk large enough that you can set this on or, you know, wherever you do your planning and then looking at your planner, this is a great planner for that. It's lined. So you've got all your lines. It makes it really, really easy to write. And then you can separate these out into sections. So I was looking back here. I think I tried it on a week. Let me see if I can find that week that I did actually plan in here. The one whole week that I planned in here. I hope I can find it because if I can't, I'm just going to have to tell you what I think I did. There it is. Okay. So I kept the days of the week as they were and I tried to utilize this for work because when I got it I realized it wasn't gonna work for planning out for plotting my stories so I wanted to try something different in it and so what I had done is I made a column for the city I work just so you know I work at a police department I'm in the records division so I handle a lot of reports and paperwork so that kind of gives you why why these are the way they are so things I sent to the DA's office city attorney all other items that were on what we call the merge and then tickets conditional releases toes dogs all of that counter and registrations and then records requests so and then this week all of like the issues that I was having like problems I needed to solve with the software um, ORSs that needed to be entered in the software, different things like that. And this is actually a beautiful layout. I used, it looks like stickers. Um, I used some markers and some white gel pen. I've got some washi tape in here. It's a very minimal, what I would consider a minimal layout. Do you need all of this washi tape and stickers? No, absolutely not. You could do this with a black pen and just, you know, separate it out. In fact, there's already separators. You could leave those alone if you're if you like the colors. Even if you don't mind the colors, just leave it that way. So, if you have seven things or six things that you want to track during your work week, this would be an amazing planner for you. And then you could use this for the weekend. The goal originally didn't work out for this planner. Could I see taking this to work and utilizing it again? Sure, absolutely. And it would be really, really easy to modernize this 2020 planner into 2023 or even 2024. The days are gonna be the same, the dates will be different, 
right? Or I could leave the dates on there and change the day of the week that it happened to be, which might be a little more confusing. I like the Monday through Friday layout. Am I going to do that? I don't know. The great thing about having your planners that you've purchased and didn't quite work out the way you wanted them to is that you always have something to go back to because where I'm at today may not be where I'm at in six months or eight months or even a year. So if you save your planners and you can go back and try them in a different format, you can try to rework them a little bit and then you decide, oh my gosh, yeah, this is the, this is the planner that I want for 2024. Like I have decided this is the size, this is the layout. I've played with it enough that I know I want to live in this for, you know, a year. Then you go purchase it. If you are keeping track during this video series of the things you do love and the things you don't love, and this happens to be one that you do love, grab a spiral notebook, grab a composition notebook that's roughly the same size. Doodle out this layout, okay? It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly this. But what I want to challenge you to do is do this layout for a couple of weeks. See what's working for you and what isn't working for you. And if you get to the end of that week or two weeks and you're like, April, this is the bomb. This is exactly what I have always, always, always wanted in a planner. Do it. Grab it. Get your hands on it. If you find that you are in this for, you know, a week and you thought it was going to be the best thing since sliced bread and you discover that it's not, that's okay too. You don't have to get it. If you happen to order it and you've got the means to do so to try it and you decide you don't like it, don't throw it away. Save it. Because like I said, down the road, you may want to go back to it. So let's go to the end of this planner. We've got a notes page and then we've got a checklist back here, which I thought this was really cool. And I thought this would be really cool when I ordered it for all of my book stuff because I could use one column for the titles of my books and this column for where I'm at in the process, like and having the last one be publish, right? So you'd have write chapter one, actually it would be like character development, the process of, you know, what things are going to happen in the book and then get all the way through going to the editor for the first time, coming back, the rewrite, going back to the editor for a second, having the book cover design come through, getting it approved, any change, all of the, that that has to deal with uh, publishing a book, right? It didn't quite work for that. However, what I could use this for is anything that I wanted to track and it has you fold it on this line. So fold or cut along this line. I, I think so that you can line it up on the rest of the pages. Like if you go over here, I don't know that that would be necessary and I definitely wouldn't cut it out cause that scares me. I don't like to cut things out of my journals or my planners or journals. Oh no, that's not why. So there are multiple pages. So multiple pages of these checklists. I don't know that I would ever fill that up, but if you do a lot of checklists and they're regular, then that would be very helpful. And I, I love the colors in this planner. With Erin Condren, you get a minimum of two pages of stickers. So there's page one, page two, loving the apples, so cute. Page three and page Four. These were also in there. Um, these are, that's just a piece of paper. These are for the months. So if you wanted to, and then before I flip back over there, you've got a pocket on this side and then a pocket on this side and then the back cover. Again, those are interchangeable. So if you wanted to get a different cover, I love this one because, you know, Halloween. Um, you could definitely do that. I'm trying to find, here we go. So you could take these boxes and they're meant to go over these if you wanted to do that. Um, and then it has all of the holidays in here that you can put in on the months. So that's a nice feature as well that she has all of the holidays in there. And then she has, um, 
the actual dates that they're on so that you can put them right on the dates. So there is, there is that. I'm wondering if these also fit on this page as well. Yeah, you could incorporate them on that page as well, whatever you wanted to do. There is all of them. Wait, why is, oh, August 20. I'm like, why is there more than that? August 20 through December 21. That is why. So let me know what you think of this planner. Let me know if there are any layouts you want me to do or any ideas that you have that you want to see. If you want to see me modernize this and catch it up to 2022, three, whatever year, whatever year we're on when you're watching this, most likely 2023, I will do that. And then I will see you soon. I've got another, another, another set of planners coming up. So stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye.